everybody and welcome to the webinar. Um, my name is Philip Stoughton, I'm editor of EMS Now and uh, we've got an interesting webinar today um, which starts with a simple mathematical formula AXI plus AOI equals AXOI. Um, we'll uh, let David explain what all that means. Before I introduce you to David and before we start, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we've got your details through your registration, so we'll be able to send all of you the presentation afterwards. We'll also be making a audio recording, which will be available on demand in a couple of days. And um, we'll also be sending further information out. So you don't need to take notes, you don't need to record the webinar because we'll be doing that for you and that will be available online and on demand for you to share with other people. Um, the webinar today is on, on the topic of AXI and AOI, X-ray inspection and AOI inspection. Inspection is certainly a hot topic in the industry at the moment, lots of people talking about it and considering whether there are limits to particular types of inspection and how we can use hybrid um, or combined inspection to come up with the right solution. Uh, hopefully today's webinar will provide some insight into that. As we go through the webinar, I'm sure you'll come up with some questions that you want to ask. Very simply, just click the question tab on your um, on your screen, you'll either have a questions piece in your panel if you're on a laptop or you'll have a question mark icon if you're on a tablet. Just click on that, type in the question anytime during the webinar and at the end of the webinar session I will uh, ask David those questions and we'll run through those. Any questions that are left after our hours up we'll um, refer to David and his team via email. We will have um, another member of the Gopal team joining us uh, for the question and answer session. So hopefully we'll be, be able to give you detailed answers to whatever you have to ask. But as I say, feel free to put those in whenever you're ready. Uh, let me introduce to you David Whetstone, who is um, with Gopal, business development manager for the USA. Um, and he is going to give us a presentation, which I think will last around about 30 or 40 minutes, and then we'll go into the Q&A session at the end of that. David, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Phil, very much, and uh, thanks to everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, that was actually a really good introduction, Phil. Um, the subject that we're going to talk about today, as Phil mentioned, is uh, largely surrounding or involving AXI, um, in particular 3D um, AXI, 3D X-ray inspection, but we also want to touch on the point of combining uh, 3D X-ray with um, optical inspection. Um, each of these platforms have their own strengths, and with that, uh, when you combine them, you really get the best of both worlds, and that's what we're really presenting here today uh, relative to the claim of 100% inspection. Of course, there's uh, usually not anything, any such thing as 100% inspection, but the combination of two platforms like this uh, get us, I think, as close as possible, as you'll see. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, system itself, um, our particular system. I'm going to talk about X-ray in general, and uh, so I'm going to cover quite a bit of territory here. Um, as Phil mentioned, I've got an applications engineer on board today, so if there are some uh, detailed questions that you would like to dig into later, we can do that. And uh, also, uh, we always invite you, of course, to contact us after the webinar, and uh, we are always happy to provide more detail or even uh, demos as, uh, as necessary. And with that, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, the content of today's webinar, um, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to talk about just the basics of how X-ray works. I'm going to show some examples of what X-ray looks like, uh, how it reveals uh, particular faults, and I'm also going to compare those to AOI. Um, I'm going to show some examples of a production line for APC conformal inspection that involves X-ray, and then talk a little bit also of how um, X-ray inspection aligns with acceptance, acceptance criteria for electronic assemblies, and then we'll uh, touch on the conclusions of the webinar. Um, as many of you probably know, um, X-ray is uh, comprised primarily of an X-ray tube that produces um, X-ray radiation. 
um, that produces a beam that is ex uh, that is uh, exposed um, or a test object is exposed to the X-ray beam. And given the uh, transmission through that test object, um, a detector picks up the resulting radiation. So radiation is affected by a number of different things, uh, including difference in materials, um, whether it be metals, plastics, um, uh, those kind of you know composites, those kind of things. Um, differences in densities as well as differences in thicknesses of materials. And the result of this is a gray scale interpretation. So the more uh, dense a material is, the more thick a material is, the more it will block the x-ray and uh, that will produce a darker um, gray image in the result. Um, also differences in materials, uh, metallic materials for example as compared to plastics or composites. Um, do not uh, block uh, x-rays as much, so you'll get a lighter gray. And you'll see that in the uh, illustrations and the example um, images that I'll be showing here. Um, to get started with that and to kind of further illustrate how this gray scale interpretation works, here we see a comparison between an optical inspection image and an AXI image. And this is a 3D AXI image. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the 3D aspect as we go on. As you can see in this example, the PCB material is uh, very, um, very visible in optical, of course, because it's picking up reflected light. Um, in the AXI image, um, the actual PCB board material is pretty low density. So you can see just a weak uh, gray image um, that corresponds to the uh, PCB material itself. Um, the IC pins are a little bit more dense, and they're also metallic, um, so we kind of get a middle density um, interpretation from those. And as you can see, the gray is uh, slightly darker, and you can contrast it against the background of the uh, PCB uh, board material itself. The plastic case um, is very visible in optical, of course, um, but not very visible at all. It, again, is a low density material. Um, so it's not uh, very, very visible and you can see uh, components on the other side of the board in this particular case right through it. Um, then of course we have uh, solder joints which in this particular image are by far the highest density elements and those that most readily absorb and reflect x-ray so that the x-rays don't get through to the detector. And as you can see from this image, um, that is very visible. You can very easily see where solder joints are, where the mass of the solder is. Um, looking in the upper left-hand side, you can easily see a short. Um, that short is visible in the optical spectrum on the left with the AOI, um, but not nearly as prominent um, as you can see in the x-ray image to the right. Um, and Example of how x-ray fits into a production line these days, um, as you'll see, I'll discuss this later, but um, x-ray is being considered uh, increasingly for inline uh, production applications today. Um, historically, speed has been an issue, um, but today that's starting to change, so we see x-ray appearing in assembly line. Um, in this particular case, is a fairly simple example where we have a loader or some kind of input station. Um, often this will be fed by a conveyor, for example. And then we have the x-ray system itself in the center. And as you can see from this example, it's, um, uh, the footprint is not uh, terrible. It's, it's a little bit larger than typical ALI uh, system, but not that much more. Um, on the upper right of this image, you'll see our verification station. Um, I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail later in the presentation. And then, of course, we have an unloading or output station, which will um, either collect um, units under test or uh, feed into a conveyor system or um, whatever is set up uh, for the particular production line. Um, looking at a few requirements um, that AXI really addresses, um, one of the requirements that is a challenge these days is inspection of hidden components. Um, as you can see from this ALI image, um, we have a uh, device underneath the metal shroud in the center right. 
Um, that shroud is not a heat sink. It's um, I believe just a radiation shroud. So while it has significant density, the density is such that we can penetrate it with x-rays. And as you can see in the x-ray image on the right, um, we can in fact see the device underneath the shroud. Um, if you look closely at the pin images of that particular device, um, you can see the varying grayscales for the hill of the um, solder meniscus. Um, so as you can see here, even through a metal shroud like this, um, we can uh, often you know, get visibility. Um, this can alter, uh, be, be different if it's a very large, thick heat, um, heat sink or some kind of material like that on top of the device. You can always see through um, impeding uh, structures, um, but in many cases you can. For a second example um, of a requirement, um, uh, which in, in, uh, involves uh, hidden solder joints, um, in this particular ALI image, as you can see in the center of the image, there are four FPGAs. And of course, from a, an optical standpoint, um, the connections for those VGAs are not visible at all. Um, even, of course, from angle view, um, those aren't visible. Uh, but with x-ray imaging, we can, in fact, see the solder balls on the bottom of these devices. Um, we can see details of the shape and density of the solder balls. In fact, if you look closely at the uh, balls on the bottom devices, you can actually see voids in the solder balls there. So there's a great deal of detail here that we can see uh, relative to these BGA devices. Um, these devices would not be inspectable at all in any other case except for electrically uh, testable. Um, so x-ray gives you direct analysis and access to these, uh, these solder joints. Um, another requirement um, is top and bottom inspection. And looking at the same example here, you can see that we have actually transitioned through the layers of the x-ray image. Um, again, we're talking about 3D x-ray here, and with 3D x-ray, we image the device from multiple different angles, and this gives us the ability to actually separate uh, the z-axis. So we can see separate components on the top, we can see separate components on the bottom, we can see the solder joints, etc. So we can actually do top and bottom inspection in one pass with x-ray. Um, there are cases where um, uh, impeding devices or heat sinks or metallic structures, for example, um, may, be, uh, may cause a problem with two-sided inspection. Um, DFT, designed for test, is important in laying out boards um, to be most effectively inspected by 3D x-ray, so that certainly is a consideration. Um, but as you can see here, when DFT is done properly, and uh, board extra uh, board layout is uh, done such that it uh, complements the 3D X-ray capability. Um, very effective uh, double-sided uh, inspection can take place. Um, to talk about the cycle times a little bit, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, historically X-ray and 3D X-ray in particular has not been widely considered for inline applications uh, because it was simply too slow. Uh, many um, assemb assembly lines that do use inline x-ray inspection actually will use multiple systems, um, perhaps two systems side by side to uh, be able to accommodate and keep up with the line. Um, but our technology in the um, 3D X-line systems is fast enough to actually be compatible with uh, typical tack times, and so it is uh, usable in line. Um, to give you an example of why we are fast um, with x-ray, um, conventional AXI systems typically use a stop-and-go stepping methodology. Um, anytime you use a stop-and-go stepping technique like this, um, you have settling times that are required between images to allow mechanical aspects of the system to settle. Um, once you move those mechanical aspects and stop them, um, there's a certain amount of settling time required before you can actually take an image. So the stepping methodology is actually quite slow. Um, we use a methodology where we do a smooth scan. So we don't stop and start uh, for each image. And as a result, 
the overall scanning of the board takes place much quicker and it's uh, much smoother and faster and gives us, um, or at least is one aspect of what gives us um, much, uh, much shorter cycle times. Um, in addition to this, I should mention that mechanically in the X-Line system, um, we use a staged uh, handling system for the board. So we actually have three stages within the machine itself which allows us to stage boards um, while uh, one board is being inspected. So board handling aspects of this particular system also um, help us greatly with uh, speed of test. Typically, we're three times faster than a stop and go acquisition methodology, but of course that depends on the particular application. Um, one other reason why we are so fast is the Opticon X-Line 3D system um, is really not intended for as an optical uh, inspection system. It's not intended for visual, high-resolution visual X-ray analysis, such as a CAT scan system or that sort of thing. Um, we optimize speed and resolution. So we, we go to the resolution necessary to create detection, um, necessary to avoid false calls, um, but we stop there um, for the sake of speed. So we uh, are always looking for that optimum uh, combination of speed and resolution um, for the inline uh, production application. Uh, to give you a couple of examples on cycle time, um, and again, this always uh, depends on the particular application, um, but these are a couple of fairly typical real world situations. Um, in one case, we have a PCB with uh, this is a 290 by 140 millimeters. There are 1,340 components. Um, the design does include multiple BGAs um, and uh, has a total of uh, over 5,000 solder joints. So complete inspection, 100% inspection of this particular board uh, takes 33 seconds in the Opticon X-Line uh, 3D system. Another example of a slightly larger, um, slightly less dense board um, is this case where we have a 400 millimeter by 230 millimeter double-sided assembly. Um, there are over 3,000 components, which include uh, 22 uh, BGAs and more than 11,000 solder joints. Um, so this board, while it appears uh, less dense, actually there are a lot of solder joints and a high, high population of BGAs, uh, difficult to inspect um, uh, targets. Um, as you can see from an optical standpoint, uh, this board would be quite challenging to inspect. Um, but with X-Line 3D, we can provide 100% inspection of this board in 38 seconds. To give you a little bit of a feel for um, some of our software um, elements in the system, um, again, we're talking about a, a, an x-ray system sitting in a production line. And in a production line, there will be an operator, of course, that will be assessing failures as they come off of the system. So we provide a lot of software-wise uh, capabilities that help um, operators of the system uh, quickly determine uh, and characterize uh, failures and determine whether failures are legitimate or false calls and help them to make that judgment quickly and accurately. Um, in this particular case, um, I'm illustrating something we call the 3D topo view. Um, on the far left, you see the actual x-ray image of a particular component. Um, the most interesting really to look at is the resistor on the bottom, where you can see the uh, meniscus on each end of the device. Um, if you move to the center, uh, you can see a topographical profile of that solder joint. And again, here you can very clearly see the characteristics of the meniscus on the toe of the contacts. And then moving uh, further over, we see a color-coded uh, interpretation of that particular 3D model, um, where you can see emphasis of the V um, as high aspect. So you can see very clearly here um, how this uh, particular view uh, would greatly help an operator to understand what they're looking at in terms of a failure um, coming off the system. A few other examples uh, just to give you a sense of this uh, particular software technology. Um, in the upper left, you see uh, lifted leads. In the bottom left, that particular device. 
And as you can see in the topple view, um, those are very clearly illustrated. Um, the well soldered pins on the top, you can see the uh, meniscus on the toe of the uh, contact um, rises in the z-axis very clearly. Um, but in the bottom left, the uh, solder is completely missing. Um, similar things you can see in voiding of uh, BGA balls. Um, you can see completely unsoldered cool wing pins in the uh, center left image. Um, and then in the center right image, you can see voids in a solder under a heat sink. Um, so this is an image of a heat sink that's been soldered um, down, and you can see clearly the uh, density and composition of voids in the uh, solder uh, layer in between the heat sink and the device. And then, of course, as we saw earlier in an example at the beginning of the presentation, shorts and uh, are very clear. Um, you can see that uh, very clearly in x-ray image on the left and then even more clearly in the top of view. In this particular example, uh, in the bottom left, we can also see a, a defective solder joint um, very clearly. So again, um, while these uh, failures are very visible in x-ray image itself, um, they're even clearer, more clear and uh, easily detectable in the top of view. Let's talk now a little bit about um, acceptance criteria of electronic assemblies and how that applies to uh, X-ray in particular. Um, there are a number of specs, um, as I'm sure you know, that uh, illustrate um, acceptance criteria for electronic assemblies. And um, X-ray certainly helps us to uh, gain compliance um, with those requirements. Um, a good example here is a uh, goal wing, a typical goal wing pin. In this illustration, you can see uh, the going uh, pin um, with the solder joint, the corresponding solder joint. A second, uh, cr uh, secondary criteria for inspection here is actually the uh, forward meniscus of the solder joint. Um, that is visible, of course, in AOI um, in a number of ways. It's also visible in AXI. Uh, but much more challenging in most cases is the primary criteria um, which is often only visible to AXI. Um, under certain circumstances, um, we can uh, visualize that solder aspect um, with an angle view, an AOI angle view, um, but it's much more effective in AXI. You can see the profile of the hill much more clearly, uh, the density of the solder, et cetera. Um, so again, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about AOI uh, later on. Um, so we should illustrate here again, um, this is a really powerful combination of the two um, where we can produce 100% uh, and very effective inspection. Um, a few other examples that correlate with acceptance criteria for electronic assemblies um, are uh, represented in these two AOI images. Um, the top image is, is a uh, orthogonal top view of uh, some solder pins. Uh, the bottom image is an AOI uh, angle view, which is angled at a 45 degree angle. And as you can see, um, as I mentioned earlier, you can see in the pins on the right in the lower image, the heel of the solder meniscus um, from this angle view for the pins toward the end. Um, but of course, as we get into the pins in the interior of that row, uh, that visibility becomes uh, much less prominent. And so visualization of the hill of a solder joint in that particular case um, is problematic. Um, however, if we look at um, this, these examples in the x-ray image, um, as you can see um, on the right, we can very clearly see the hill um, of the solder joints. And uh, they're very dark and uh, dense in color. So we know that that is a very good and uh, strong solder joint. If you look at that in top of you, of course, you would also see a very strong representation of the healthy profile of those particular solder joints. Um, however, if you look in the, at the bottom, um, you can very easily see uh, some very, very bad solder joints. And those are um, really not solder joints at all. <laughs> um, they are, are largely unsoldered pins. Um, if you reflect back on the uh, visual image, 
um, you can see there the uh, the Andres Halbert pins are not uh, nearly as prominent and obvious as they are in the X-ray image itself. So again, um, this is an example of the contrast between ALI and AXI. Um, with ALI, um, we can see most uh, obvious prominent failures, um, but there are, are a lot of failures, uh, failure potentials there. Um, that are much better imaged and uh, revealed by X-ray. Um, another example with a set of pins here that have a, another failure characteristic. Um, again, in AOI, um, you could see these pins, and I can tell you that our AOI system would certainly be able to um, detect failures in these particular pins, as you can see. From the reflections, um, there are problematic uh, solder joints here, um, but it's not always completely obvious what the nature of the problem is from the optical standpoint. Um, however, if we look at this in X-ray, we can much more clearly see the characteristics of the solder joint. Um, in the bottom uh, left and right uh, rows of pins, you can see very healthy solder joints, and then of course in the top, uh, very or solder joints. And again, if you compare this to the optical image, we could certainly detect those pins, uh, those uh, faults in our AOI system, um, but much, it's much more effective with the X-ray backing it up. Um, not to overburden um, the issue, but it's always good to look at examples, and here's a few others. Um, here are some gold-wing pins that, again, are unsoldered. They're actually lifted and offset, a bit, as you can see. And uh, looking at this in top of view, again, you can very clearly see the, the problem. If you look at the pins on the upper uh, side of the top of view image, you can see that the hill of the solder meniscus rises very uh, prominently um, into the z-axis. However, in the pins in the lower right, um, there's really no uh, solder meniscus whatsoever. And you can tell very clearly um, that this is a bad solder joint. So again, in the optical image, uh, we can see a failure. We could probably catch this failure with AOI. Uh, but to characterize the failure in more detail, X-ray brings a lot of additional information. Um, to take a little bit more of a look at our verification station that I mentioned earlier, uh, just to give you a little bit of a sense of the software that uh, is used on these systems. Um, this, of course, is only just a very brief glimpse of the software, but it, it will give you an idea. Um, on the left um, image here, you can see a schematic view and the original X-ray image. Um, this schematic view, this is kind of poorly composed. Um, there's actually a crosshair just under the corner of that window that's forward that actually uh, shows where in the particular schematic view the failure resides. So that particular view shows you exactly where on the board the failure is. Um, the window to the right um, shows you a close-up x-ray image of the device and the failure. And then, of course, the top of the image on the right uh, very dramatically illustrates the issue with the upper right pin. Um, so this is the uh, an example of the software, for example, the operator of the system would be looking at. So when there is a failure um, exhibited on a board, uh, they would get this view. And as you can see here, they can very quickly and easily identify uh, in great detail the nature of the failure. Um, so this adds a lot of capability to the operator's um, uh, ability to uh, more accurately identify uh, failures or false failures. Um, here again is another example. Um, this is uh, an example that's actually quite dramatic and surprising in, in a number of ways. Um, when you look at the optical images on the left, um, it's not real obvious that there's a problem here. Um, very careful programming in AOI would likely catch this in most cases, um, but I know for a fact that um, we've seen many uh, escapes of uh, solder issues like this. And um, if you look on the right of the X-ray image and the top of view images, um, a problem becomes much more prominent. In the left X-ray image, 
for the SLT23, you can see very healthy um, uh, heel on the solder meniscus. And the right, of course, you see a very poor solder joint. And then that is um, further um, illustrated in the top of view itself. Um, this is actually a case of an inverted device. Um, so this device is actually glued down to the board, um, but it's been inverted during assembly. So there's no solder joint whatsoever there. Um, from the optical standpoint, um, that's not all that obvious. Um, it would be made more obvious from an angle view with ALI. Um, but again, x-ray brings even more information to the table. Um, to uh, illustrate a little more um, relative to uh, QF pins, uh, QF uh, end pins, um, as you know, these pins can be somewhat challenging to inspect um, because the, the pin contacts are largely hidden. Um, as you can see in this x-ray uh, image, the uh, forward meniscus is uh, very clear in this image. And again, with top of view, you can see a very dramatic characterization of the solder uh, joint itself and the meniscus as it forms on the uh, leading edge, the, the toe of the contact. So again, here you can see um, very prominently, even on a challenging device like a QFN, um, the exact nature of the solder joint. Um, in this particular image, you also see some voids and the uh, solder layer that uh, forms a, a bond with a heat sink on this particular device. And we can look at that a little bit more closely. Um, since this is 3D x-ray again, um, we can separate uh, the Z layers of the image and uh, be able to isolate uh, these, uh, the solder layer that uh, bonds the um, heat sink to the device and very clearly illustrate uh, the voids that are involved here. Um, in these particular applications, I don't have a really good example of it in this uh, presentation, but we can actually calculate percentage uh, of the void, you know, the percentage of the area that's involved in voids, uh, the distribution of voids. There's a number of statistical um, elements uh, of analysis of voids that uh, we can bring uh, to bear with the software. Um, again, taking a little bit closer look at the uh, verification station here. Um, on the left is the uh, visualization station that shows us the schematic view and shows us the location of a particular failure. Um, on the right image, we see the x-ray image itself. In this particular case, it is a package um, also that is soldered down to a heat sink. So you can see voids um, with a heat sink, and you can also see the uh, pins, the solder joints on the pins. And uh, that is visualized very clearly in the top view image on the right. And then there is a classification keyboard, a specialized keyboard that helps the operator or programmer classify um, failures as they come off. Um, one more example that uh, illustrates a different type of heat sink if, um, application uh, in the form of a DPAC package. Um, here you can see a little bit more clearly how the schematic view uh, has crosshairs that shows you the location of the failure. And then again in the bottom right view, you see the x-ray image of the device and the top of view of the device that illustrates not only the solder joints, um, but also the uh, nature, the homogeneous nature of the uh, heat sink uh, solver layer. Um, to move on to a slightly different subject, um, THT, that's a through hole solder joints. Um, these also can be quite challenging in um, AOI applications. In this particular image, you can see in the bottom center, um, there is actually a pin that is not soldered. In the center part of the image, you can see a solder joint where the pin is not protruding from the solder joint itself, so it's not really totally clear if uh, the device is actually mounted there. Um, and then on the left there, you just see an unassembled un hole. Looking at this a little bit more closely, a through-hole solder joint um, does not only consist of solder contacts on the surface, um, it also consists of the barrel fill or, or the solder fill of the hole itself. 
Um, that is something that is not uh, inspectable really at all with ALI. Um, electrical tests can reveal problems there, but often does not. Um, barrel fill issues are probably more of a lifetime or dependability um, problem and uh, not usually detectable um, immediately through electrical tests. So this is an application where x-ray can become very important for inspecting um, high dependability uh, through whole joints. And again, uh, we can characterize uh, some of the failures through a through hole assembly uh, with AOI. If we look at a case um, like this particular connector, um, we can take a look at the pins themselves. Are the pins deflected? Are they out of place? Are they in place? Um, and we can see that with AOI. Uh, we can look at the bottom side of the board and we can look at the solder joint as it exists on the surface and look at the nature of that particular solder joint. Um, however, with a 2D x-ray, we can actually see uh, the density of the solder joint more clearly. And with 3D x-ray, we can actually see through the entire uh, barrel fill element of the hole. Um, so we can characterize with 3D AXI um, the actual fill of the hole itself in terms of the percentage. Uh, to look at this a little bit more closely, um, let's look at this particular illustration. Um, as you can see here, we've got an illustration, a 3D illustration of the solder in the uh, through holes. Um, if we take a look um, carefully, we can uh, actually profile these particular solder joints at different levels in the Z um, aspect um, for the solder joint. And as you can see here, while this solder joint may look just fine on the surface, as we descend down through the hole, um, we can see issues. And if you look at the solder, uh, I mean, excuse me, the x-ray image on the left, um, in the third and sixth rows, you can very clearly see examples where the hole is not properly filled with solder. Um, so those are potential uh, dependability issues down the line. And in many applications uh, for high dependability, uh, high dependability electronic assembly, this can be a very critical consideration. So this is an application where um, x-ray is very clearly needed and uh, very clearly useful. Um, it illustrates something that is really not detectable in any other practical way. Um, just to look at a few other assemblies, um, or, or um, excuse me, fault uh, types, um, uh, here are some resistor images that illustrate a various uh, range of um, failure problems, solder uh, joint problems. In the top, you can see, for example, um, there's no solder at all there. Um, there's really just paste. Um, in the images proceeding to the right, you can see just very poor soldering. Um, you can see what looks like probably a cold solder joint and then a more proper solder joint on the right. In the lower images, you can see various types of offsets and various types of lifts um, of this particular resistor component. And those make for uh, a few good uh, additional examples of uh, the imaging in x-ray. Um, if we look at these, these resistor examples, as you can see from this optical image, um, we actually have a resistor in a tombstone situation where one end is completely lifted. Um, as you can see in the x-ray image here, that's very clear. Um, you can see a very unusual meniscus profile on the right. Uh, contact to that uh, resistor, and then of course the complete lack of a solder joint on the left, and then of course in the top of view image that becomes even more uh, prominent. Um, in the upper two components, you can see a very clear and normal uh, meniscus on the contacts. Um, however, in the uh, lower image, you can see not only that the uh, the contact of uh, the solder joint on the left is completely missing but you can actually see the dual meniscus um, on the resistor contact that gives you some idea of uh, what's going on there. Whoops, excuse me, I just hit the wrong button. Sorry about that, <laughs> just do a quick reset here.
One moment, we'll get back there. Just consider this a quick review. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that again. Um, anyway, back to where we were. Um, here's another uh, case with a resistor that is actually billboarded. Um, so this particular resistor is um, offset uh, laterally. It's actually sitting on its side. Um, so there is, in fact, a solder joint on each end. But as you can see uh, in the optical image as well as the x-ray image, um, the solder joint is very unusual. Um, in the optical image, you can clearly see something's wrong. In the x-ray image, you can see additional information there that illustrates what's going on. And then, of course, in the top of the image, you can also see uh, very clearly that there's a problem. So again, this makes this very, um, very easily identifiable in terms of the failure, the nature of the failure. Um, another look um, from the standpoint of the uh, verification system, uh, verification station. As you can see here, the schematic aspect is uh, very clearly illustrated in terms of where the location is. Oops, sorry about that. Someone just pointed out to me here. I need to go back to full slide view. There we go. Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Um, anyway, back in the schematic view, um, we see here uh, very clearly the location of this particular failure. Um, in the x-ray image, we can see that there's definitely a pro problematic solder joint on the right contact of this resistor. And again, on top of you, that's uh, very clearly illustrated with the very healthy uh, meniscus on the left contact, um, but a very poor uh, solder joint on the right. Um, to touch on a little bit different subject here, um, capacitors are a little bit different creature in x-ray. Um, they are very dense and of a material that does not um, allow transmission of x-rays very effectively. So unlike the resistor example where you can very clearly see the metallic contacts on the end of the resistor and the body of the resistor itself is largely invisible, in the case of a surface mount capacitor like this, the entire capacitor um, illustrates a density, so it's a little bit more of a challenge for inspection. Um, the software helps us deal with that when setting up a program. Um, the software allows us to profile what a capacitor should look like. And again, I should point out here that this is all library driven. Um, one of the aspects of the software setup and programming in the XLine 3D system is that the uh, the software is driven uh, very uh, effectively by a very robust library of components. Um, and these components, the nature of these com components are defined, of course. And with, the, with respect to capacitors, um, the nature of the device, the package, and the solder joint is defined, which helps us to uh, produce proper detection for these kinds of components. Um, again, um, from the verification station point of view, um, we can easily see um, the particular component being observed. Um, we can see the x-ray image of the component um, in the uh, lower right, and then again, a uh, toggle view of that particular component. Um, to talk about the BGA solder joints in a little bit more detail, um, this is uh, naturally a very active uh, subject in x-ray inspection. Um, BGAs uh, pose many challenges. They pose challenges to electrical tests uh, due to, to lack of accessibility. Um, Gopal actually deploys and uh, develops a very robust line of um, JTAG boundary scan uh, related products to help with electrical tests and these kind of challenges. Um, but for optical inspection, x-ray is really the answer for BGAs. Um, there is very little that you can do from an optical standpoint for a BGA. Uh, but with x-ray, um, you can reveal a, a very great deal of detail. Um, in this particular case, you can see a image uh, BGA 
and its particular balls, where we can see the shape of the balls, we can see the density of the balls, um, we can see uh, the shape of the balls gives us a lot of information um, that relates to the quality of the contact. Um, in this particular example, we can see numerous voids within the salter balls, so there are a lot of detailed characteristics here that are revealed in 3D AXI. Um, Salter ball issues come in a number of different forms. Um, here is a case where there's uh, really no salter contact at all. You can see the ball sitting on paste. Um, other cases where there is a just a very poor salter joint, partially saltered. Um, in this image, you can see that there's uh, some salter flow there, but there's also it's really just kind of sitting on paste. It's not completely saltered. And then, of course, the head and pillow case, which uh, many of you have probably uh, encountered or at least heard of. And then, of course, a nice, healthy solder joint. So if we look at some of these aspects in um, the x-ray domain, we won't go into a lot of detail here because, frankly, there is a lot of detail um, and complexity involved in BGA inspection. Um, but just to give you a sense of how this all works, um, we detect the ball basically through its shape. Um, we measure a number of different values, the area of the ball, the compactness, uh, the, X -ax the axis ratio of the ball, uh, the mean grain gray value of the ball, as well as the mean gray value of the background. So this gives us the ability to characterize a solder ball in situ. Um, detection of voids is uh, very clear in um, 3D x-ray like this. Um, as you can see here, the density is very easily revealed. Um, we can measure void area. We can measure the percentage of void area relative to the ball area. And as a result, uh, provide very valuable metrics um, in terms of being able to guarantee uh, certain criteria relative to voiding of solder balls. Um, in this case, we see a well-soldered uh, BGA ball. In other cases to the right here, we see examples of head and pillow. And as you can see here, um, the characteristic shape of the ball is uh, very unusual in the case of head and pillow. Head and pillow comes in a number of different forms, but it's generally a resist-oriented uh, reaction, uh, which results in the deforming of the salter ball. And with 3D AXI capabilities, we can, we can actually measure the ball at several different um, areas, several different areas in the z-axis uh, to characterize the shape and normality of the shape of the ball. Um, again, we can measure um, access ratio, the compactness, the area, and then uh, probably most importantly in the case of head and pillow, the actual shape or deformity of the ball. So again, this is a um, issue that's very prominent in today's uh, circuit board assembly and one that's probably amongst, if not the most challenging uh, issue out there being dealt with. And uh, X-ray comes, comes very close to uh, providing a very effective um, detection for these. Um, it's not always detectable. Um, there are many variations, as I mentioned, in hidden pillow cases, um, but in many cases we can, in fact, uh, detect um, head and pillow uh, faults in solder joints, and as a result, uh, we can definitely greatly improve uh, the effectiveness of inspection of PGAs uh, from that particular aspect. Um, again, I want to come back to um, the combination of AOI and AXI. Um, we've been talking primarily about AXI, but there are um, very good reasons to merge AXI with AOI. Um, for example, um, fiducials can often be difficult to detect in x-ray um, unless the fiducials are soldered or otherwise treated to make them visible to x-ray. This can be a challenge. So um, combining AOI with x-ray can be effect very effective in helping with this kind of setup issue. Um, OCR, OCV, data metrics codes, just reading codes, uh, on a device, of course, is not possible with x-ray. So again, combining AOI capabilities within an x-ray system um, is very powerful and rounds out the capabilities of the overall system. 
Um, in addition, uh, polarity marks um, are not usually detectable with x-ray, so AOI um, helps there. And uh, colors or color coding is not detectable with x-ray. Um, so having a very accurate uh, colored AOI capability um, rounds out the uh, overall solution in that area as well. Um, to talk a little bit about um, our particular AOI systems, um, here you can see a combination of AOI and AXI, where with the AOI system we can easily see polarity marks, we can easily see markings on devices, um, we can see color coding, colors involved in the assembly, etc. And then in the x-ray image, we can see both sides of the board uh, very clearly, as well as BGAs, etc. Um, and to go into a little bit more detail on our AOI capabilities, um, our illumination systems are very powerful, and one of the keys to effective detection and avoidance of false calls in AOI inspection, um, we have a number of different aspects um, going into detail on our AOI uh, system capabilities is really a webinar in itself, uh, but I did want to at least touch on some of the capabilities here. Since the message I really want to deliver in this webinar is a that involves the combination of AOI and AXI. Um, we have top flash illumination that helps with polarity check, presence, um, OCR printing, barcode reading, color recognition and verification, as well as image acquisition of color overview images. Um, as you can see here, um, the color capability is very clear. The ability to see markings is very clear and optical. Um, there are challenging areas where contrast becomes very important in optical inspection. Um, we have some capabilities such as an infrared metaflash illumination. Our illumination capabilities really are full spectrum from infrared to, uh, to UV. Um, so we can produce an infrared capability that helps in many different cases of um, challenges with, uh, uh, with uh, contrast. In this particular optical image on the left, as you can see, those SOT packages are almost invisible. Um, however, when you look at them in the infrared spectrum, um, they become very visible. The markings are visible, the bodies are visible, the overall contrast is greatly improved, and the understanding of the makeup of the board is, is greatly enhanced. Um, so, to uh, round up, we're running a little bit short of time here, so to kind of quickly round up the conclusions, um, usage of X-ray technology is very important in the conforming to IPC inspection requirements. Um, test of hidden solder joints is possible. Real test of real solder meniscus profiles is possible. The real test of tin hole fill in THT applications is possible. Independent uh, reflections and shadows, um, or I should say X-ray is independent of X-ray is uh, reflections and shadows which often um, AOI depends on very highly. Um, we can provide safe detection of critical solder joints, such as lifted leads with X-ray. Um, technologies that are, uh, that are necessary is a 3D X-ray system uh, to separate top side from bottom side. 3D is very important in X-ray um, uh, inspection, particularly from a performance and cycle time aspect. Short, short cycle times are needed um, to keep up with line speeds, and inline x-ray is an investment for the future, and uh, especially in applications where uh, testing of high dependability um, PCB assemblies is uh, involved. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found the uh, presentation interesting, and as I mentioned earlier, we're always happy to follow up. I generally follow up. And uh, but feel free to contact us if you have questions or would like more information. And with that, I'll throw it back to Phil for questions. Okay. Well, thanks very much, um, David. Very interesting uh, presentation. Some great images there that really give us a good idea of what's going on. Uh, I've unmute, unmuted um, Patrick. Uh, I can hear his uh, microphones working uh, because I can hear some background noise at his desk. Patrick, can you just quickly introduce yourself so um, everybody on the call knows who you are? Yes, my name is Patrick Schurert. Um I'm application engineer for X-Ray and AOI here for the Google US uh, 
office and um, I'm open for any questions if you okay. have something. Perfect. Okay. Well, I've got a couple of questions come in, but if anybody else has them, just go ahead and type them in now. I'm conscious that we're only uh, a few minutes away from um, the end of our hour, so we'll get straight on with those. Uh, first question, um, and I'm happy for Patrick or David to chime in on these. Can the x-ray detect head-on pillow defects? Uh, if so, what is the false call rate? Um, I, I think maybe that question was before uh, David has, okay. uh, had had the slides uh, because he he was talking about head and pillow. Head and pillow is indeed uh, a critical uh, test, and um, we believe we can we can test the majority of head and pillows. But there are cases where it is not 100% safe. Um, especially this one slide David had, uh, where you just really have a perfectly shaped <coughs> solder of <coughs> of the BGA ball, and uh, it always depends on how that head and pillow is shaped, because uh, you see here in that slide we go after the shape. Um, we we cannot slice it thin to to see the actual. Uh, uh, Edge or border between the good and bad. So here we see if if the shape is bad in the center, we can say okay that's for sure and head and pillow. Um, but uh, David, if you go back one slide um, where we see the actual head and pillow images, I'm not sure where it was. Um, yeah, right there. So um, the third picture, it is in head and pillow, but the shape is almost good. And uh, what we go after here is the diameters. Of certain slices, and um, this one is still detectable, but uh, it becomes clear that it is it is uh, hard sometimes to detect. So to answer the question, yes, but uh, there are there might be cases where we will be not able to yeah. be one hundred percent sure. Yeah, and you get the odd um, false detect as a result of that. Okay, yeah, I think particularly with head and pillow, it's important to consider that bringing as much detection to the table as possible is mm. just where the value is. Yeah, uh, you may not be able to always detect, but we can greatly enhance the capability to detect. Yeah, one of the things I was curious about, David, is when you're uh, are you advocating using AXI and AOI? All the time, or are there instances where one's more successful than the other? And how do you choose whether to do one, whether to do the other, or whether to do both? What's the what's the kind of strategy there? Is it dependent on the um, assembly mix? Yeah, certainly it, it does uh, depend on the assembly mix. It also depends on the test requirements and the the nature of the board and the application. Um, Patrick, you could probably characterize that from real world examples. Yes. Um... I always say a healthy mix of all test methodologies available in your line is the best way to go. Uh, you need to have electrical test, you need to have um, AOI, and if you have hidden solder joints like BGAs, you need to have X-ray. That's the quick answer. Uh, again, a mix of of all your test methodologies is the best. Yeah. Okay. You may run into boards that are very simple and don't have challenges, and AOI may be perfectly capable and, and faster, frankly. Um, so there are possibilities where, you, where the mix would change, but, but as Patrick mentions, I think bringing all, all capabilities to bear is, is, gives you the, the greatest possible test capability. Yeah, and that really leads me on to another question. As well as it giving you the best um, fault detection, surely it would give you the best feedback to correct the process. Um, and, and that's a big part of it, isn't it? Providing that feedback loop so you can not just see that you've got a fault, but you can see what that fault is and, and perhaps where in the line that fault's coming from. That, that's a huge point, I, and that's one of the reasons we emphasize so much the top of view images, and, and almost we're overbearing on those in the presentation because that is such a powerful tool mm. in terms of being able to characterize clearly the nature of the, of the issue. Um, especially when you're you're dealing with an operator that's having to um, to, to classify failures, um, those that that you get so much information and so much clarity out of the system um, that it greatly enhances that. Uh, yeah. Patrick, anything to add there? Yes, and uh, um, 
Philip, uh, you, you are absolutely right. It is about an indicator of your production process. Mm -hmm. So what you test here is not only uh, failures and, and passes, it's it's also tells you how is your oven profile. If yeah. you have if you have a solder joint like in the first image here, uh, then something is wrong with your temperature or your, yeah. your soldering mass yeah. or your, your pick in place. Yeah. So AI yeah. and XI are definitely indicators of your production and gives yeah. you very good feedback what's going on. Yeah, it's that whole um, whole closed loop process. It's that whole thing yes. that things like Industry 4.0 talk to. Um, I've got a couple of linked questions here that are that are relevant to each other. Um, how does how how about data export after operators review, and how can we interface with a GoPool uh, Go system to import information? Um, uh, from shop floor data collection systems, and really the person there is referring to what what you've got in terms of automatic um, application program interfaces, APIs that uh, that work with this system. How does that how does that process happen? Hmm. Um, yeah, I think there are, we we need to come here from from several sides. Uh, what we what we what we export out the results are typically go into. Uh, Open MySQL databases, uh, but we also do uh, link to certain traceability tools and uh, production tools, which keep track of the whole line. And mm -hmm. I, I believe that's what the question is about. Uh, yes, uh, we, we can link, and not only link and send the, the, the results into those systems via an open interface. Um, we can also uh, basically import. Uh, the, the information from the previous steps, yeah. okay. um, but we, we are not quite there. Industry 4.0, we are working on it, but there are so many standards out there, so many different vendors. Um, yeah. It's always hard, and we, we are pretty much open. We like to customize and, and make it happen, and uh, I don't think there is a complete one solution out there. Um, but be able to customize those interfaces. That's yeah. important, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's the custom solution anyway, isn't it? I mean, I've got one question here that that is answered in the same way. Do you consider that both side inspection um, is required to when you if you want to reduce inspection time? And I guess that whole inspection time and how much detail you go into is is that constant compromise that you're dealing with the, um, throughout the process. Optimizing the speed of the of the process to meet the pulse of the line, whilst maximizing the amount of inspection you can do in that time, is that one of the challenges that that you're constantly dealing with? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, we we just provide tools to test. We can do a hundred percent test, um, but if we go into each detail, we will not keep up with line. Yeah. So the trick here is uh, to find the right coverage. Mm. And again, a an, an, an good production line consists of several test methodologies. Yeah. So if you have an AI system and an X-ray system, you're pretty much covered. At the end, a functional test or an ICT test, and, and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, I have seen customer try to test 100% AI, then test 100% AXI, and then do again everything with ICT, what's possible. Yeah. That won't work. You will just you will just have crazy cycle times and uh, yeah. yeah finding absolutely. the right mix that's that's the key yeah and testing the things that need testing and testing the things that might go wrong rather than just continuously looking at stuff that you know isn't yes. going to go wrong so that's absolutely fundamental and that brings me yes. to my last question which um, relates to that what does that mean in terms of um set up in not just in terms of how much time set up takes and i guess some of that's done offline but how much training and expertise is required to be able to do that setup well, um, yeah, we, we typically um, do a one week training, which includes a three day programmer's training. So after three days, um, someone should be able to program that. Um, it helps that we, like David mentioned, provide a, a huge library where someone can can use uh, ready to go test steps. Um, right. So three days, three days for the programmer, and then we have two days for for general setup, um, maintenance training, um, operators training. This require probably one day each, okay. um, because we we believe uh, the customer should should maintain the machine by himself. So we train them. And 
Okay. Yeah. So one week. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I'm going to wrap up there. I've got lots of comments thanking us for a great presentation. A number of them asking whether they can get a copy of the slides. Obviously, we'll send out a follow-up email to everybody that's attended and everybody that's registered. We had a really high percentage of our registrations attend today, so I'm really grateful to that. Um, it's good that we've managed to time our webinar to finish one hour before any World Cup matches start. So that's uh, <laughs> that's good news for for everybody, even even uh, even our American friends who um, call it soccer, not football. Um, so I wish everybody luck, good luck with the rest of with the rest of the World Cup. Uh, my country, England, is already bowing out, so that's done. Um, we'll get the web the um, an email out to everybody so you've got the presentation and we'll get an online version of this uh, on demand so you can watch it again if you need to. In the meantime, David, Patrick, thank you so much for your time. David, particularly interesting presentation, great information today. <laughs> I've just got a uh, uh, someone's flashed up Brazil exclamation exclamation in the uh, <laughs> in, in the comments box. I guess they're a Brazil supporter. I think they're a good bet. So, guys, thanks very much for your time. All the participants, thank you very much. And thank you to GoPal for sponsoring today's webinar. It's been an absolute pleasure. Look out on EMS now for any other upcoming webinars and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Phil. Thanks. Bye.